Presentation is from Lab Tech International. Uh, the presentation will provide the guidelines for improving digital learning in Tibet institution. But this uh, framework can be applied for the primary, secondary, and university level as well. Please uh, enjoy the show and don't forget that to grab the mo mobile phone and be ready for yes. the scan QR code or join the registration link that provided yes. by our partner. Okay, so let us learn from this uh, lecture. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Stephen McKee, president of uh, Lab Tech International and also the president uh, emeritus of World Didact, Global Association for Education. So thank you to Siamio for inviting me to speak with you all this morning and uh, on this uh, session for uh, teacher training and development. And the section that I'm going to talk to you about today is about school institutional capacity building. And this is an area that's uh, very important to, uh, I think, in the dialogue, particularly during COVID times. Uh, but also when we talk about going into the trends of digital learning and transformation, the obstacles and the problems that we find uh, with many of our clients, customers, and ministries, and institutions around the world is, is grasping what do we do next? You know, where do we, where should we go? What is the most effective for us to implement for digital learning? And these are all questions that are important. Lab Tech ourselves, we're on the forefront of digital learning. And I could say that uh, we are developing some of the most innovative tools around in the world for improving teaching and learning uh, using new digital technologies. So I'd like to share with you today uh, the framework that we've put together that may help you uh, to look at a number of the issues around uh, identifying where you might want to go, how you might want to get there, and we call it Digital Transformation Roadmap for uh, TVET. Lab Tech, as you may know, is a, a leader in technical and vocational education around the world, and we work in over 80 countries. And we provide hands-on technical training equipment for over 30 years in automotive, HVAC, electronics, computer, IT, biomedical, green technology, electrical technology. They cover maybe about 40 or 50 trades, as you might uh, conventionally um, categorize them. And so our system is both hands-on and increasingly digital in learning because this is the way that the future developments for improving education and lowering the cost of vocational technical education uh, and, and deepening the learning, that they can do all those things at the same time. So technology transforming education. Has it? Can it? When will it happen? Um, Education is one of the last bastions of major, <laughs> almost human activities that is yet to be truly transformed by technology. The COVID era has really proven how unprepared globally education was and has really suffered during 2020. We really have lost a year and we're gonna lose more time too as well. So digital learning in its various forms can really greatly improve teaching and learning. It could span, reach, lower costs, especially in the TVET area. So now it's a 
time to seriously consider making digital learning an equal pillar of educational delivery. You know, not something that's a ad hoc or sometimes or supplemental, but making it mainstream and part of what we're doing. And if we do that, we will see education transform. And so we have a number of things that are coming together here on new pedagogy, which we're calling Qtagogy now. Educational platforms, learning management systems, classroom management systems, school management systems. Being able to learn anywhere, anytime. This may actually redefine how we operate schools and where our students learn and where we teach them. A new content, which is arising, which is incredibly powerful and engaging for the students. And this provides better motivation for them to learn. It's the difference between having a textbook with pictures or no pictures. You know, it, it always engages in the graphics and interactions. Connectivity, the, as connectivity becomes less of a problem in more countries, it opens up new possibilities. And then as we digitize, we'll get into this adaptive learning area, which holds so much pro, uh, promise for differentiated learning and multiple learning pathways and so on and so forth. So this is an example, what does it look like? It could be as simple as this. You have uh, a number of key selected equipment. This is an air conditioning. Uh, uh, lab and you have in the middle you have uh, digital workstations where the students are learning about the theory and applications of technology before they work on the training systems. So in this format you can in a very compact area do a lot of training. This is a very interesting chart that shows um, a changing landscape of edtech from a, a, a report that was just uh, released a few months ago. It's talking about accelerated growth, sector maturity and all the new interesting areas are up here where we're talking about uh, online institutions, next generation content and assessment. This is where lab tech is working here. Uh, E-learning apps, MOOCs is a little bit there. I actually would place it behind even LMS. Uh, virtual tutoring and training. These types of things are very, very interesting um, where we're going to get a lot of power from, from technology here. So this is our, our major framework uh, graphic, infographic for the digital TV development framework. And we have this divided up into three areas that we call the three I's. The infrastructure, infrastructure, and info culture. And these are the three areas that you need to look at to balance and develop your, your framework and, and your roadmap of how you're going to do it. And this gives you the points to think through. Like in infrastructure, you'll need to consider hardware. You'll need to consider integration support connection, connectivity, and bandwidth. All this has to be done with your objectives and goals in mind. So you need to look at where you are in this area and where you want to go. In the infrastructure, you have to look at the software, the applications you're going to use, the acquisition of those applications, the platforms that you're going to use, the learning management systems, the school management systems, the content management systems, the content itself. And there's two types of content in here. There's content that can be developed by teachers, and there's content that should be professionally developed that schools typically use, which are applications, which, you know, in the past it's been professionally written books and videos and so on and so forth. There's also a new generation of content of like the type that lab tech develops that's beyond what a, a teacher or even an institution can develop uh, because it takes a very wide collaborative effort. Uh, it's like a movie studio, you know, of what, what we do to engage in that. Uh, and then assessment. The new types of assessment are really, really interesting. We can do assessment in a far, far different way and even get into good formative assessment. Then we have the info culture, which is the curriculum, because we need to change the curriculum to include digital learning in the curriculum, not just lecture and practical, but also uh, we have to include uh, the digital side of where, when, and how we're going to teach that, and with what. Uh, the policy, the policies that enable digital learning to happen and set, you know, who learns online, offline, where, when, and how again. And capacity building. We need to definitely, the major thing, why this series also of, of lectures is to develop the teacher's capability so that they can be trained to develop a certain level of content and manage these systems and do their teaching and learning in a much, much better way. And then, of course, change management to make this all happen. So you go through a process here of uh, understanding the requirements and the issues and what benefits uh, can happen by this. This will help you set your objectives and goals. Then a self-assessment is needed of where you are, what capabilities you are, both institutional and uh, capacity building for your teachers. And so within this framework, where are you at? And then you need to, then from that, 
from your goals and where you're at, this will help you identify what needs to be done, what gaps are there that needs to be filled, and then you could set your own step-by-step -step program to get there according to your desires and budget for speed and how long you wish to do this. This is very subjective for each school and institution of how quickly you may want to get there. And what I suggest is that it is a journey. It, it just doesn't stop. Um, once you embark on digital learning and go deeper into it, there's always more that you can do and more benefits that you can gain. And you'll find that each year you'll be revising your programs and updating your, your objectives. And as technology develops too, the capabilities will always increase. And so this is a continuous program, actually. And that's one of the things that many people did not understand at the beginning. They thought it was a one-time, one-shot implementation, but it is not. It is a continuous uh, program for this. So also you need to take an integrated holistic project approach on this uh, to look at your curriculum, your digital learning platforms, your school design, your training labs and workshops, and your teacher development. Uh, this is very important. They're all related when you go into digital learning. So our services to our client schools is advising on digital development for institutions for teaching and learning uh, and we do this we engage with a lot of people we have a number of solutions but we're also in a position to advise on a greater overview of, of what you're doing uh, we also have professional development programs for teachers to improve their digital learning skills we do this because we find that that teachers are the key we believe that you know we all have to come along together and so it's a good place to start is with teacher development and then and introduce digital learning as the teachers become more comfortable with that. Uh, we have developed a new generation of, of uh, TVET learning management system, which could be run at, on a school campus or in the cloud, either way, uh, which runs our new generation of interactive content uh, for key TVET subjects, but can include also content from other sources too as well. Currently doing projects of this nature in Malaysia, India, Pakistan, Oman, Jordan, Peru, Colombia, Indonesia, USA, South Africa, uh, many countries around the world. And, and we're seeing the results of this now that are coming out. And so we would love to do something more in, in Southeast Asia. But first, before we get to our offer, I'll just share with you a, a training program we're doing right now in Peru uh, and Colombia. This is a introductory uh, training session for teachers in how to use digital online learning resources for technical vocational subjects. It consists of four three-hour uh, segments. E each segment is delivered once a week and then there are some exercises to do uh, in between. So it's not too heavy but it's very, very useful. Um, and if you want to find out more in depth about this, we are able to uh, offer for you uh, to our Xiaomi partners as part of this uh, lecture series. We will provide um, uh, our first level teacher training course, which you just saw, on digital learning for the first 10 institutions that apply to LabTech from any of the Siamio or the Southeast Asian nations. You can have about two teachers or administrators uh, uh, participating. So we're accepting a group of 20 uh, to do this. And we'll try this first and if by demand we may expand the program. And there will be a special bonus workshop session on developing your digital learning blueprint or roadmap for your institution because uh, we'd like to interact with you uh, and see how you're doing on that. And if you wish to, uh, to do that, this might get you get you started for that. So if you're interested in this, uh, you can write uh, to me, Steve, at labtech.org, uh, or you can write to our manager, Brad uh, Kerr, at labtech.org, also our digital learning manager. Brad will be speaking on the next session, actually demonstrating some of our content in detail. And so I suggest that you catch that. And I really appreciate uh, being with you here today. You can also visit our labtechacademy.com uh, online uh, for our online learning materials for the new generation of content that we've been talking about, and I think you'll find that interesting too. So thank you very much. It's been great talking to you today, and I hope that uh, you're taking back something useful from my session and the other sessions here. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.